Okay, we're back. So if the camera battery dies, I'll have to do a second installment. But uh, I want to wrap this up as quickly as possible. So we've got our null tracked on here. Looks like there's a little jitter, and basically the way to correct that would just be to nudge it around until it gets into place. But for today's purposes, we're going with it. So how do you create a running blinking light? Well, this normally you'd want to create a solid regardless. And we'll call this blink rate zero. We are on white. Now we got this huge thing. So normally when you do your tracking, what you want to do is create a solid and that's just right click new solid then we went through the naming stuff there so uh, right click create that and then over oops where's the controls parent if you're missing something that you don't see here you can always show all probably as well but uh, there's a lot of different options here that do make sense and some are just tedious so what we'll do here is we got our null, which I like to keep up above everything. And we'll also change its color to none. We'll change blue screens to none. Footage to, I think that's red. And we'll call blink rate gold. And if you want to mass change a bunch of stuff, like all of them, just simply select all, go aqua, and they're aqua. Right, so you want to create a solid, and we will now take it. There's a little shooter here, it's called under the parent section. You can also go here to the select and pick any one of these layers that exist over here. In this case, I want to take the shooter and link it to, uh, oops, I want to take the shooter of blink rate and link it to the null. And let me fix my spelling here. And now when we play this, the solid should lock on. Looks pretty good. There's some kind of weird snap at the end there. But that could be appropriate to uh, the shape versus the movement. So let's take a look at that. And take our blink rate. Zoom in a little. Alright, so the battery on the camera did die after all. So uh, looking over this, don't quite remember exactly what I was talking about the whole time, but from here on out, uh, I'm going to shape this uh, roto block into a tiny little circle, place it over the running light. Then we're going to go into the opacity transform and uh, set some keyframes, which I think I've already covered. Uh, in that case, you'd start with either 0 or 100% opacity. Go a couple frames forward, change it to the opposite number, so 0 to 100 or 100 to a 0. Uh, go a second down the timeline, add another similar keyframe, so 100, 0, 0. Then go a couple more frames and do 100. You can copy and paste all those keyframes by simply drag clicking and selecting them all till they turn yellow. Hit the copy key, move your cursor to where you want to paste them, and paste, and you can set up entire loops like that. When you've got your mask all set, you can mess around with the feather and the uh, expansion. A negative number will bring the mask inside your roto, positive number will expand it outside by however many pixels or percent whatever it says there feathering can give a nice soft blur so in the next videos what I'm going to cover is uh, apart from cleaning up the background with some roto uh, doing the rig removal of the fishing line wrapped around the engines I'm also going to do some more tracking and throw uh, any other graphics I need onto the ship itself to make it look like it was lit up from the show. 
from there there's some backgrounds to drop in there some space maybe a planet and uh, we'll go from there so there's going to be some roto paint work coming up and everything up to now has essentially led to this motion tracking is definitely a critical point on when it comes to roto paint so uh that's it for this one take care see you